Why do speaker drivers use different materials? Good question, and it comes from Paul in Somerset, United Kingdom. Somerset, Mom? Hmm. Hello from one great Paul to another from Somerset in the United Kingdom. My question is, is it true that some of the best speaker drivers have paper cones? It's my understanding that speaker drivers work best with lighter materials to allow them to move quicker under load. If this is true, why do manufacturers insist on using materials like carbon fiber and aluminum? To what extent does the cone material alter the sound? Thank you, and your YouTube channel is fantastic. Why? Blush. Thank you. Ah, well, that's a really interesting question. I'm sitting here in front of Arnie Nudell's. Um, let's see if you, I don't know if you can see uh, his reference speakers, and you can see over here. That's an aluminum cone. Aluminum, heavy metal, right? Well, light as far as metals go, but still heavy. And here, carbon fiber. I think. No, nope, that's not carbon fiber. You know, I'm trying to remember what Arnie had in there for his mid-bass coupler. Ah, that's right. It was a Kevlar. And that's, you know, like you make bulletproof vests out of Kevlar. And then, uh, there are certainly paper cones. There are, I mean, gosh, I've seen bamboo cones. Every manner of, of, of construction of um, ideas go into speaker cones. So let's, let's, uh, let's kind of break it down a little bit. We use, in fact, in, in our version of Arnie's speaker that we call the AN series, uh, the Arnie Nudell series, we too will use a aluminum cone in our 12-inch woofer. Now, you, you might say, well, we need lightest materials that we can in order to have it move quickly. Well, that's true and it's not so true. So, there are ways in engineering, and as I have said before in engineering, it's all a series of elegant compromises. There are no perfect solutions in engineering, just aren't. So what we as engineers do is we, we compromise. We find the best compromise solution. So I am a particular fan, as was Arnie, in aluminum coned big woofers. Why? Well, what's important in a woofer, especially a big one like that, a 12 or a 15, it's there's a whole bunch of things that are important, but one of the things that you definitely don't want is what we call cone breakup, to where the, 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 as, the, as the woofer cone is moving back and forth, that it doesn't flex and move and distort the waveform. Um, that's real important. It's also important, as Paul points out, that it moves quickly. So what we'd like is, is to have something that is as stiff as possible so that there's no breakup and something as light as possible or something that is stiff with the ability to move, okay? So there is no perfect material as I mentioned before, but with an aluminum cone, um, we, we don't get the breakup as long as we don't. There's a thing called oil can resonance that, you, you know, if you take an oil can, you. Um, I can't make the sound all that well, but it's where the metal collapses and it folds in and the oil squirts out, right? Well, if you push this thing hard enough at, a, at the right frequency, it'll oil can on you. So you have to keep uh, that kind of below there. But all that, all that aside, within the frequency range that we would use, that 12-inch woofer, it is a perfect piston with no cone breakup whatsoever. If it was paper, we might have we might have some breakup and may, it might not perform as well. What do we do about the speed, the transient nature of that? Well, that's where when we power the speaker, and that's why we always self-amplify our woofers, um, we can add power, right? So imagine, you know, if you, if you want to build a race car, you don't build necessarily the lightest race car in the world because it might just fly off the track, right? So you build one that has the, the power to weight ratio that gets you to where you want to go. And the same is true with the woofer. 
with enough power, I can move that sucker fast. And it, it, you know, we have the, the problem of inertia where we say, hey, start to move. Well, I got too much mass, so I'm not going to move. Well, that's the third part of the equation. In our systems, we make up for that with an accelerometer. That's an active servo system. So an active servo system, which not many people use, we do, Genesis did, Infinity did, Arnie did, and we will in the PS Audio speakers, there is an, a, uh, an accelerometer, a motion sensing device inside of that dust cap. And that motion sensing device uh, compares what the woofer is being told to do by the amplifier and what it's actually doing. And if it's not doing what it's told, it gets out and puts more power out to do it. So we can solve the transient problem with near perfect transient. This thing will actually do a square wave. I mean, it's like, bang, it'll go up. It uses the power of the amplifier to do that. We keep it stiff so that we don't have any cone breakup. We provide a, a motion sensor to tell what it's doing. So now we have a complex system that solves all the problems of the woofer. Would it be, have been easier to use the world's thinnest, you know, <laughs> sturdiest stuff? Yeah, but we don't have any of that. Maybe graphene someday. That, that may be something that we do. And then on, on this, now we have a whole different set of parameters because the, the frequency is higher. So here we're going to start maximizing the uh, materials to, to solve that problem within that uh, frequency range. If we had, these are ribbons, and they're very light material, but if we had like a dome mid-range, then you'd have like titanium or something very stiff, very light, very thin, trying to move within that frequency band. So it's all about achieving the results we want within the frequency band that we want to address and what we have available to us in order to make that happen. Hope that's somewhat of an answer for you. Okay, thanks Paul. Talk to you tomorrow.